there, future nurse. Now, I know I'm getting ahead of myself here, but I bet you'll like this video. And if you do, be sure to head to simplenursing.com forward slash YouTube for way more content than you can get here. And you can sign up for free. The last D is for diuretics, which diurese fluid or drain the fluid from the body and into the potty. This guy is the number one drug we use for acute or worsening heart failure. Big NCLEX tip. So remember the Ds. Diuretics decrease the blood pressure by draining the fluid or diuresing the fluid to dehydrate our heart failure patients with heavy fluid. Now we have potassium wasting and potassium sparing diuretics. Potassium wasting ends in "-ide", like ferrosamide or hydrochlorothiazide. Both rhyme with dried. But again, be careful, not isosorbide. That's a nitrate, guys. The NCLEX will try and trick you. So remember the O's in isoso make it a vasodilator, similar to nitro. Now, loop diuretics like ferrosamide and torsamide are the first drugs we use in acute or that worsening heart failure. So NCLEX keywords like worsening crackles, new edema in the legs, and even rapid weight gain. Guys, we give IDES to make the body dry. These guys work by blocking the reabsorption of sodium in the kidneys. So with less sodium retained, we have less swelling retained, and our patient is saved. Now, we only give potassium wasters if potassium is normal, between 3.5 and 5.0. Anything less than 3.5 is a big no-no, guys. We don't give the drug. So we encourage our patients to eat melons, bananas, green leafy veggies, and even liver. And a big no-no here, we avoid a licorice root, which lowers potassium, like those found in black licorice candy. That's a common select all that apply question. So just remember the double L's here. Licorice lowers potassium. Now, potassium sparing diuretics, S for spironolactone, just think S for spares the potassium. Just like prills and sartan, this spares potassium too. But instead of blocking the angiotensin, this guy blocks aldosterone directly to let fluid out of the body and into the potty. And it ends in tone, so think it blocks aldosterone. Since spironolactone spares the potassium, we teach patients to avoid those potassium-rich foods, guys. So we don't eat those green leafy veggies, those melons, avocados, and we avoid that salt substitute. And again and again, any potassium abnormality, the first nursing action is to place them on a cardiac monitor. Always ask on the NCLEX and exams as a priority intervention. Lastly, since potassium pumps the muscles, NCLEX keywords like muscle spasm and even muscle cramps this indicates a potassium problem, even words like weakness or paresthesias. So with potassium wasters that lower potassium, think low pumps in the heart. We get flat T waves and ST depression, and also this little weird U wave. Now a little side note, if you have to replace potassium via IV, well guys, don't kill your patient. We never push potassium IV. This means instant death. We always give it IV bag over an hour or more, guys. Never 30 minutes and not even 45 minutes. One hour or more, typically four hours. And with our spironolactone, which spares potassium, we get high potassium. So think high pumps with peak T waves and even ST elevation in severe hyperkalemia. Now, for other killer nursing considerations, guys, these three show up a lot on NCLEX exams. So, guys, before we give you diuretics, always check the BP. B for blood pressure. You hold the medication for low blood pressure, anything less than 100 systolic. B for BUN and creatinine, the kidney labs. We always check before giving since it can hurt the kidneys by giving too much or too quickly. And again, the P for potassium imbalances. Since P pumps the heart, we always put the patients on the cardiac monitor. Then we watch for muscle spasms or cramps and even weakness and paresthesias. Big NCLEX tips. Now finally, five general diuretic NCLEX tips, always on SATA questions. Number one, take in the morning, not at night. This med drains fluid, so we don't want potty breaks all the time during the night. Second, this med makes patients dizzy, so slow position changes to avoid feigning, aka that orthostatic hypotension, also called postural hypotension. Third, daily weights, not weekly, but daily, always reporting two to three pounds or more. 
Remember, weight gain usually means water gain. So maybe we need to increase their dose. Four is risk for sunburn, so just use sunblock. And finally, low sodium diet, since sodium swells. So guys, again, no chips, no fried foods like deep fried chicken or even deep fried ice cream, definitely no french fries, and even no canned foods or packaged foods like cheese, wines, meats, and even fast food. And again, avoid those over-the-counter meds like can. So guys, cough and flu meds, anti-acids like Tums, acinaminophen like Tylenol, and NSAIDs like ibuprofen and naproxen. Guys, all these contain high amounts of sodium, which swells the body. Now a little side note about furosemide, our loop diuretic. We already know it's the number one drug for worsening heart failure, right? But caution. If given too fast, it can be ototoxic, meaning ear pain or ringing in the ears, called tinnitus. And even hypotension, that low blood pressure. But guys, not, not bradycardia. Never low heart rate. And if given too much over the long term, it can cause nephrotoxicity, meaning kidney toxic, with high BUN and high creatinine. So always check the two labs to protect those two kidneys. And as you know, hypokalemia, that low potassium, below 3.5 for those long-term doses. Not usually affected by fast administration. All right, guys, that wraps it up. Now, don't forget to see our eight-question cardiac quiz and test your knowledge in our quiz bank. Thanks, guys. Struggling to stay afloat during nursing school? Let me help you achieve our 96% pass rate by heading over to simplenursing.com forward slash YouTube and signing up for free.